everybody. Welcome to D-Queen First Assembly Online. We're so glad that you joined us today. Now remember, we have started meeting in person once again. So we are still having a physical gathering at the church on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. But we still wanted to have church with you. So here we are online. We're still going to have worship. We're still going to have the word. It's just going to be a little different because we want to make sure that we give you a top quality production and that will come in a couple weeks when we get everybody back and all the bugs fixed. But we're glad that you're here today. Anyway, just want to remind everybody once again about our regular online service schedule. Sunday nights, we still have our family night from 5 o'clock to 6. We're material for your pre-K and your kids. Please remember Monday Night Live, prayer service at 5 o'clock online. It's been a great time to be able to interact with people. Also remember our Wednesday night devotions on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And remember that we have updates from Pastor Ray Friday mornings about 9 o'clock a.m. And then remember, if you're a student, our youth are once again meeting Wednesday nights in the youth building. Please talk to Pastor Jerry for any more information about that. But we're glad that you're here. Anyway, we're going to have a time of praise and worship. So let's just, before anything is said, let's just go ahead and invite the Lord to fill our places of worship today. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to meet online. Now, Lord, we pray right now, Lord, as people may not be able to be here, we just pray that, God, that you just fill their homes with your presence wherever they are, whether it be their automobile, whether it be their homes, wherever it is, God, we just pray that you inhabit our praises. We're going to give you this time, and God, speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you in a few minutes. Surrounded by you, 
Jesus, surrounded by your love. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. Amen. Isn't it so encouraging to see young people that are willing to be used by God? And look what happens when people are just willing to be used by God. Amazing things happen. Great job, team, in helping us in the praise and worship this morning. Before we go on, just want to remind everybody about a bunch of announcements that are coming up in events. Please remember that this Sunday we have started meeting in person. So we would love to see you in person Sunday mornings, 1030 a.m. Also, please remember about some events coming up. Please remember that on the 27th of September is our annual Fire Bible service. Uh, that's where we take up our faith promise pledges for Fire Bibles where people can receive Jesus all around the world. Please remember about October 4th. October 4th is a big day at the church. We're going to be having Freedom Sunday where we're going to be honoring veterans and honoring our first responders and police and soldiers. So please make it a plan to be here. And then please also remember that we are relaunching our nursery and children's department on October 4th. Also, please remember that the month of October, we are going to begin a 30 days of prayer for our government and our country. Uh, leading up to the election. So what we're going to do for 30 days is we are going to pray for 14 minutes on either 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. Please sign up online or please uh, sign up at the church personally. If you are going to participate in this, the more people we have, the merrier. The Bible says for two or three are gathered in his name, he's with us. And then if we were to pray, he's going to heal our land. So it's very important for us to pray. A lot of things going on. It's going to be a great time. Please remember our online service schedule. We're still going to be doing material online as well as meeting in person. It's great that we meet online, but we would love to see you here in person. There's just something about talking to somebody. But anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to go into a time of worship and our giving. And we've talked about this every week. Just as much as raising your hands or clapping and singing, us sacrificially giving to the Lord and being obedient to the Lord is another form of worship. So please remember that there's several different ways that we can give. Please remember that you can come by the church office Monday and Thursday, Monday through Thursday from 8 o'clock to 4.30, and then you could also come by Friday from 8 o'clock to noon. 
Also, if you want to mail your tithe, you can mail to the church at P.O. Box 146, D. Queen, Arkansas, 71832. You could give online at www.dqueenfirstassembly.org backslash giving, and you can even text to give online at 870-280-2070. So many good convenient ways that we can still be faithful to God. But anyway, we're going to give you an opportunity to give, but before you do, and before Pastor gets into the Word, we're going to once again have a time of worship. Your heart and lead me in your love. 
what awesome worship that we had today and how that God has really blessed. I want to remind you to uh, pray for some people, you know, that God has, God's done some great miracles in our church. And in the last month, we've had three people saved and, uh, and more. And we just, those that have contacted us. And, but if you, if, if God has touched you in some way, that you that are watching online, and I thank you for joining us uh, in our in-person service today. And we are so glad to be back in church. I'm glad to see everyone, and I'm glad to see you. But I want to encourage you to write in the chat line, get a, get a watch party started, share this program, for we want to touch your heart and your life. But we're going to pray for Mr. O'Neill and uh, that God will touch him in a very special way. He's having surgery, and we just pray that God will heal him. Pray for Miranda's dad, that God will touch him. And, and uh, we've got some preacher friends that, uh, that we want to remember their families. Uh, uh, some have lost their, uh, Terry Miller is a pre, uh, in Pocahontas lost his son and, uh, to cancer. And so let's just pray for those families. Let's pray uh, for our nation. Let's pray for revival that God will move in a mighty way and God will bless and the outpouring will fall. So we want to pray that prayer. Will you pray with me and let's pray for Jeff and Michelle Dove. That's our missionary for the month. He represents the fire Bible, which I'm preaching out of today. So pray with us. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your power and your love and your anointing. I am so thankful, God, that you're going to move in a mighty way in, in the lives of people, Father. We just give you the glory. We give you the anointing. I pray that you'll heal, Mr. O'Neill, that you'll touch these pastor friends of ours that have went through sickness and trials. And, and Lord, and I pray that you'll touch their churches. And I pray you'll touch Van Buren First Assembly and other churches, God. Encourage them and uplift them. And, and Lord, just uh, bring revival, Lord. I pray, God, you'll move upon Butterfield. Lord, and uh, others that, God, uh, I pray, you, Lord, you'll touch Lone Oak, and, and Lord, that you'll touch, uh, Lord, Verdigris, God, and Lord, you'll touch Christ's place. There's so many, God. I pray you'll touch my friends. Anoint them. Lord, I pray you'll touch and move in a mighty way, Lord, upon, oh, Lord, our church. Give us revival. Let there be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. And all the church said, amen and amen. DA family, I want you to get your Bibles and, and um, join with me as we unpack this message and we go in this journey in the book of Luke chapter number 8. And um, I have verse 2 there, but let me back up to verse 1. It said, soon after when speaking of Jesus, went on cl claiming and bringing the word, proclaiming and bringing the word, good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities they had been delivered many many of them had been set free but the word of God says Mary called Magdalene from whom seven devils had gone out I want to preach to you as we're uh, ending up our series on what Jesus sees in you it's amazing what if you'll call upon the Lord and let him you let him be uh, your dwelling place the promises that are there and, and the outpouring that is there when we realize what Jesus sees in us. But the title of my message in this last sermon on what Jesus sees in you is Mary's Hallelujah. Mary's Hallelujah. What could Jesus see in Mary Magdalene? He saw the fight, the commitment, the faith, the boldness, that potential was inside of her. And, and she would not, when she, her life was changed, she was never ashamed of him. She never denied him. What powerful. She didn't allow the influence of the words of other people around her that was saying about her. Some feel that she was even the one that washed his feet with her tears and dried his feet with her hair. She gave of her own means to help the cause of Christ because Jesus had changed her. So I want to look at three things that caused Mary to raise a hallelujah. To raise a hallelujah. Three things that gave Mary her hallelujah. So let's unpack this. Let's take this journey and I want you to let God speak to you and open your heart and let God do mighty things. The first thing that raised a hallelujah in Mary's life 
was Mary's salvation. She was delivered from seven demons and was set free. Many think that she was a prostitute, so you know what they were saying about Mary. But oh, when Jesus got a hold of her, she raised a hallelujah. The bondage, the, the torment, the pain, and all the people that, 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 that could not see what could happen in her. All the abuse that she took, the, the, the dirty, unclean statements that were made about her. At one time, she was, dis, dis, she was decisive, or not decisive, but deceptive, and lustful, and unkind, and been in a trap. But Jesus, who was not worried if the Sanhedrin, or the Sadducees, or the Pharisees saw him talking to her, begin to minister to her. Oh, she was the one that was unclean. <coughs> she was the one that, that, that no one wanted to have anything to do with. But Jesus set her free. Jesus set her free from the bondage of sin, the hold of Satan, or no longer should we, she be living in that lifestyle. Mary raised a hallelujah. Her praise was different. Her worship was different. My goodness, she became a gospel spreader of the good news that Jesus saves. That's what Jesus sees in you, my friend. She was also one that had no hope that was given hope because she, she was introduced to the hope of glory. And she, his name was Jesus. She was a Galilean, so many people didn't want to have anything to do. So how great of salvation. That's the reason why she had a hallelujah. That's a praise, that's a worship, that's a lifestyle. That's telling others, that's what your hallelujah is. It's knowing that Jesus has done a great work in you. Romans chapter five and verse 18 says, therefore as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one of the righteous leads to justification and life for all men. No way. Yes, because of Mary, because of you that are watching. You may not know him and you may not understand what everything is going on, but my friend, because of you, Jesus died on the cross. He rose again and created an opportunity for you to have a hallelujah. We have justification life. We can live in the love of Jesus. How great was her salvation. She was delivered from all the bondage. If we neglect this salvation, if we neglect the cross, if we dis disrespect it, disregard it, and discount it, we can lose our salvation. But Hebrews 2 and 3 says, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared by first by the Lord, and it was uh, attested to us by who? By those who heard. Mary's only hope, and the only way was salvation, the only way she was going to get out of that was that she would meet Jesus, and she did. That's Mary's hallelujah. Mary, I can see you, Jesus, what he sees in her. I can see you clothed with my salvation. I can see you as you receive the gift of eternal life. My friend Isaiah 61 and 10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of right. Do you hear that? He has covered me. He's got you covered. Oh, there's a song that says, cover me. He can cover you when you're not strong. He can cover you when you have no way of, 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 of getting out of a situation. But he'll cover me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Christ gave Mary her hallelujah. Jesus sees you, friend, and he'll set you free from sin. He will deliver you from all bondage. You no longer have to be a slave to all the things. You don't have to be a slave to the drugs. You don't have to be a slave to that abuse or homosexuality or illicit sex lifestyle or, or, or things that we don't even know and, and that you buy, I mean, that has been bound by. You don't have to live that way because God sees you and he can set you free and he will give you a hallelujah through salvation. Living in victory over sin is what Jesus declares. By walking with him, you can do that. The second thing that gave Mary her hallelujah was Mary's revelation. Oh, she, Mary follows Jesus. He, she speaks to him. She loves him, and, she, and Jesus loves her. But yet Jesus dies on the cross, and Jesus is dead. 
Jesus is the one who saw many things in Mary that no one else could see that would be great and mighty things. Just like people don't see the potential in you. He don't see what you can go through. He don't see the problems uh, that God is going to bring you out. He don't see the victory and the, uh, and the glory that can shine through you. Or they don't, but Jesus does. Mary is headed to the tomb. Still a follower, but yet not got it all together, hold totally. But it was going to change there was going to be a raise, hallelujah, going to happen in the moments of time. John chapter 20 and verse 11 says, But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had laid, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said, to them they have taken my lord they have taken my hallelujah and i do not know where they laid him having said this she turned around and saw jesus standing but did not know that it was jesus jesus said to her woman why are you weeping whom are you seeking supposing him to be the gardener she said to him sir if you have carried him away tell me where you laid him my hope is gone. My hallelujah is gone. And I will take him away, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Arabic, Rabon, which means teacher. She realized her hallelujah was right in front of her. Mary, the angels and the body of Jesus is gone. He is alive. He turns to Mary and says, Mary. Mary's hallelujah because of Jesus saw in her. Jesus is close to the brokenhearted. Psalms 34 tells us that. You see, those that seek him, then there are times whenever we're living for the Lord and, you know, we're not aware of how awfully close he is. Friend, he's closer to you than you think. Amen. Could you imagine what revelation happened inside of her when he said her name and she realized it was Jesus? What she realized is all that he had said to her, every promise, every word that he'd given her, everything that he said that was going to take place, she knew it was true. Friend, the devil has tried to tell you that it's a farce, that there's nothing to it, there's no way that it can happen to you. You can't get out. Look how the world's treated you and what they call you and what they see in you. But Jesus, he's calling your name. Listen to me. He's calling your name, friend. You may have got discouraged. Uh, family, you may have went through something and you think, I don't have any hope. Jesus is calling your name. He's still our Savior. He's still our healer. He's still our baptizer. He's still our victor and our soon coming king. He's not given up on us. So don't give up on him. He's faithful, church. He is faithful. Mary realized that she, in the past, Lived a big lie. It will not. It will not hurt long. The sex and the drugs and the abortion, and the homosexuality, the mocking of marriage. It, 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 it'll pass. But now, Mary, the divine Son of God, His truth had set her free. Friend, we've been given the Word of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, the cross of Calvary, and the risen Savior. You don't have to live in that. God wants to give you a revelation that will raise a hallelujah inside of you that no one can keep you quiet. My goodness, in this world that we're living in, the stuff we're seeing, the lawlessness, the lies, the, the fakeness, the turmoil, the anger, God can put a hallelujah in you that will raise you above. He said he will lift us up above. The third thing that I want to talk to you about in Mary's hallelujah is her testimony. That's what created a hallelujah in her. Mary sees what happened. And she is set free that very day that she comes encounter with God and she's ministering to Jesus. You can see it in Mark chapter 15. She's at the cross in Matthew chapter 7 and 28 and 29 where she's at the tomb. Mary's the first person that Jesus appears to and declares, I am. Am alive. That surely raised a hallelujah. I think she had a good old time. Jesus personally, the personal appearance 
to Mary Magdalene after his resurrection was a special reward of her loyalty, her devotion to him, and to be a follower and a witness to others. Jesus was saying, Mary, I see in you. What a testimony. See, Jesus tells her to go and tell the disciples in Matthew chapter 8, verse 7 and 8. He says, then go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen. The angel says that. And behold, he's going to, before you to Galilee. There you will see him just like he told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. What a hallelujah. What a hallelujah. You see, friend, you may think no one sees what's really inside of me, and Jesus sees it. He can set you free. He sees so much that you can do for him. You've been living for God, and the devil's tried to beat you down, that you can't make it, that you can't be that, or you compare yourself to somebody else. But, friend, you can make it. I want to tell you a story about a, a lady named Anna. Anna was in prison and greatly tortured for her faith, placed on a cruel rack. Her joints and her bones were pulled literally out of place. She fainted from the pain of that, and when she regained her consciousness, Anna began to preach, and for two hours she preached to her tortures about the love of Christ. On the day of her execution, she was carried to the stake in a chair because her bones were dislocated. And she could not walk. At the last moment, she was offered the king's pardon. If she would recant her faith in Christ, she could go free. Anna said this, I did not come here to deny my Lord and Master. Anna died praying for her murderers in the midst of the flames. She raised her hallelujah. God's faithful friend. He's not going to forsake you. He sees in you what no one else sees. And he loves you. And you've struggled. Someone here is listening to me that has struggled. You've loved God and you feel like that, that you don't know what to do. And the enemy's telling you, oh, you might as well give up. You can't live it. Yes, you can. You can't feel that what rises up is a hallelujah you can have that. Maybe you're watching here, sitting in this congregation today. I don't know him. I don't have a praise. I don't have a testimony. I don't have a revelation. You can have that right now if you call on his name. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray for that one that loves you, but they're struggling. They're going through so many things. They're, they're, they're feeling in defeat and fear and anxiety has surrounded them. They don't have a hallelujah. They don't think they do, but you, Lord, you can give them that praise back. You can put that shout back inside of them. You can put the knowing that I can do all things through you, that I can make it and I can be used of God. I pray you'll speak to that person right now, right now, and give them victory and give them hope. Father, I pray for the one that don't know you. That, Lord, the word of God said, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friend, listen to me. If you don't know him, pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my life and set me free. Give me a hallelujah inside of me, a praise a worship, a song, a joy, a promise, God can give that to you. Just ask him right now. Believe that he is alive. Believe that he rose from the dead and that he'll come into your life. And if you ask him, he will in the name of Jesus. Friend, if God's touched you, you've struggled and you've been serving God, but you've struggled and you said, I've lost my hallelujah. And God has touched you. I, wanna, I want you to uh, put it in the chat line. We want to pray with you. We want to sing with you. We want to rejoice with you. And if you've given your heart to Christ, let us know. Give, a, give us our, your information that we can contact you and give you uh, information and material that will help you. 
let us know. Chat it, put it in the chat line because we care. We really do. Thank you for being a part of this service today. Thank you for joining with us. And remember, we love you. God bless you.